Red Raw, H265. Red Raw, H265. Unnoticeable, right? There's practically no differences. And then this is the internal end log. This is zoomed in at 600% to show you the drastic difference in the detail retention in the internal codec of the end log in the Nikon ZR. Big difference. But look at mine. It's a fraction of the file size and retains 99% of the quality. You can't even see it to the naked eye at 600%. What's going on, guys? Today, I want to share with you something incredible. I'm going to teach you how to get 99.9% .9 of that red raw quality in a fraction of the file sizes from your Nikon ZR. I know a lot of us bought it for the form factor, for the screen, for the red raw quality, but a lot of you are scared of those file sizes and so you don't want to get one or it's your only one so you're forced to shoot an end log, that very crappy, shitty, mushy, uh, unsharp footage. There is a way to keep small file sizes for later usage, um, especially if you don't know what you're going to do with your files right now. You just want to keep them. You've been shooting around. You want to store it, whatever. There is a way to keep 99% of those, that quality um, for safekeeping. Why would you want to do this? Not all of us are trying to shoot the next big movie. Some of us just are enthusiasts and we love great quality, um, but we don't want to deal with those red raw file sizes. The internal compression from Nikon is terrible in the ZR, uh, but there is a way to compress it afterwards for yourself for later usage. Some of you are not going to find this useful because you still have to record in Red Raw, but for the most of us who can shoot it and don't mind compressing afterwards, um, here's the method for you. Stick around, there's a process to it. If you don't know what you're doing, I'm gonna share my settings and just copy exactly what I'm doing and you're going to have a way better, way better quality and more manageable file sizes for the future. Oh, before I go, don't forget to share, please. Uh, I haven't heard anybody talk about this, so it's going to be very useful information for most of us who have a ZR and can't manage file sizes. Do this. Well, first off, you need to treat you need to compress the log file. So you want this, you wanna export this, okay? Now I'm gonna create a brand new profile, right? Keep it clean. Now, as you can see here, the log curve has not been extended to its maximum potential here. And so you're probably gonna to wanna to extend this because once it gets embedded in your file, you will not be able to change this linearly like you would with a raw file. So I like to put mine about halfway through to make sure that that, uh, that, that, that gamma or whatever, that dynamic range has been fully extended because H.265 is going to throw anything under here and over here away. It's going to reduce that quality. So you want to stretch your image out for as many of these as possible. And then you're probably going to want to set your white balance to something that's better. So you may want to, you may want to, you don't have to do this, but you may want to actually grade like a color correct your image and then check to see if your white balance is on point um, before compressing. Because once your white balance is set, you won't be able to change it after the fact. So you can change your white balance, right? And then you can go back and 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 uh, just keep your white balance in here. And if you're doing your white balance change, I would do it before your transforms, right here. That way, it stays consistent after your transforms. Okay, so you always, um, I mean, so do your white balance before that. Once you've gotten to this point, if you've you've stretched out your image for H.265, you're going to want to deliver it and export it as an individual clip. Now you can do this with all your clips all at once to save time so you don't have to wait and do them individually. Uh, and then you, you pick, you pick um, your folder. These are the settings that are gonna be the most important, okay? You're gonna want to render at source resolution. You're gonna switch this to H.265 and then your quality output 
needs to be switched from automatic to restrict to your own data rate. I'm using the S12 as a guide to how I'm choosing my data rates for this. The S12 chooses, I think, 200 or 300 megabits per second for an H.265 file. So I switched this to 250 um, megabits per second. Then you're going to want to change your encoding profile to 422 10-bit. Okay? The rest of this is not that important. Now, if you have 32-bit float, you could add your 32-bit float audio from your ZR into this. And then you can uh, set your own source name so it maintains the file name from the, the original red um, footage. Or you can set a custom name. Doesn't matter. That's up to you if you want to be consistent with your footage. Then once you're done, you're just going to set your in and out points for the files that you want to export and then add to render queue, export. Okay. It's that simple. When it's done rendering, which might take a while, you can bring your footage back in. So this is the red raw footage and this is the H.265 footage. Okay, you're probably going to see a little bit of a difference in the exposure, but that's because you had to stretch the image out yourself um, to be able to maintain uh, the, the data and the quality. And then you can grade it as if it was red raw. Sort of. You don't want to abuse it. Obviously within reasonable limitations for the H.265 codec. But as you can see, if I stretch this image out all the way, now when you zoom all the way in, you can see there's very minimal differences when it comes to quality, especially in comparison to that end log. Okay, so now let's talk about the pros and cons of doing this. Number one, you're gonna lose your raw abilities. White balance, out of there. You're not gonna be able to change your white balance after the fact it's an H.265 now and it's burnt in. So. Uh, what you could do is you could change your white balance before converting, uh, before compressing the file so that you have a usable white balance. At least you have that. Uh, number two, you're not going to be able to change the ISO linearly like you could with the raw file. That's out of there as well. Um, but to, that's not a massive compromise, if you ask me, uh, because the pros are you get amazing image quality. You get the amazing sharpness of the red raw. Uh, and you get the crazy colors as well. Now, are you going to be able to flex those colors, blast the saturation, crush those curves like a big brain? No, of course not. This is H.265. You got to treat it like H.265 like you would with any other camera. It's no longer a raw file. And then the last corner I would say is that um, this is a habit thing. Because you are compressing after the fact, you will have to dedicate some time to that compression. Um, I think I took 30 minutes. It took me an hour, 30 minutes to an hour to compress 30 minutes of footage. So you're going to have to get used to that too. If you can get into the habit of every time after you're done shooting to compress after the fact and then leave those files for later, then you're good to go. Maybe compress overnight. Um, if you do manage to uh, fill an entire terabyte card before your day ends, then that's that. Start shooting an end log, I guess. Um, but yeah, to me, the trade-off is worth it. The quality re is retained. The sharpness is there. I'm happy. If it's not good for you, then that's just, this is as far as my discovery goes. <laughs> All right, y'all.